Hi, my name's Leah and welcome to Leah Loves Science, where I answer niche, when necessary, science questions. Today, a topic I already know a weird amount about, space toilets. So your average Earth toilet, <laughs> ground toilet, is kind of reliant on gravity. So you have a cistern full of water and there's a little valve in the bottom that opens when you flush. The internet tells me that's called a flapper. So I'm excited about that. And this valve opens and it lets the water out. The water fills up the bowl up to a certain level. And then the water kind of gets pushed over a bend in the pipes and it basically drains the cistern, except for a little bit of water in the bottom. So it's kind of a gravity reliant system. But on the ISS, we already know there's kind of no gravity. Actually, that's not true. The ISS is only like 420 kilometers up, which is the distance from London to Carlisle. It's basically no distance at all, just up. So gravity at that level is 90% of what it is on the ground. So you would weigh 90% of what you do stood at sea level. So gravity is definitely still there. Why do the astronauts float around? Well, basically, gravity is pulling the International Space Station down and the International Space Station is going forward at 17,000 miles an hour. So what happens is the International Space Station basically moves this way and that way and it kind of results in a this way motion. And what it basically does is falls and then just misses Earth and then it falls again and it just misses Earth. So essentially the International Space Station and all the astronauts inside it are falling really fast. <laughs> They're in free fall, um, as you would be in a lift if the lift was falling. You'd all be floating around because you'd all be falling at the same rate. Basically what's happening in the International Space Station. So if people tell you there's zero gravity there, it's a lie. Everyone's just in free fall. There's definitely still gravity. It's just not having a massive effect on what's going on in there. So the people on the International Space Station can't use a regular toilet, because as previously mentioned, it's kind of reliant on gravity. So what do they do instead? You can't send people out for months at a time and not have a plan. You gotta have a plan. So essentially there are, I think there's two, maybe three toilets on the International Space Station and they all work the same way. Essentially, if you need to pee, um, there is a tube with a funnel on the end and a little fan attached to it. And what you essentially do is turn on that fan so there's just the barest amount of suction because you don't want to cause any accidents medically. So there's just the barest amount of suction coming from this fan. And essentially you can just then pee into the, in, into the pipe or into the funnel head. And uh, that fan suction kind of just draws the pee into the pipe. Uh, if you don't have to pee, if you got to poop, there is uh, essentially a, it's called a solid waste storage thing. <laughs> Uh, it looks distressingly like a beer barrel, like what you might keep beer in. And it's got a hole in the top that's like five inches across. And essentially this has the same fan attached to it. So you just turn it on. There's the barest amount of suction because you just need the barest amount of suction. You don't need something that's going <laughs> to cause anyone to get stuck to any pipes or storage containers. And essentially in the storage container is a bag stretched across it. Um, so one would sit upon the storage container, the fan would draw anything into the bag and then the astronaut would have to turn around and essentially seal up the bag. They're super easy to seal and push them into the storage container. And these storage containers can take, I believe they last around 10 days if you've got three astronauts using them. So they don't fill up super quick, but they probably fill up faster than you would like and then you have to replace the whole barrel with another barrel. For the urine, that gets recycled into potable water. So when you're sending something up in, um, in a rocket, in a shuttle, mass 
is so important. It costs so much fuel to physically send something into space. And water is a kilogram per liter. So for every liter of water, you say, hey, my astronaut needs to drink, for example, it costs thousands and thousands of pounds to send up one kilogram, one liter of water. So any urine um, that is taken into the system is essentially just recycled. It goes through a big filtration system and the astronauts drink it the next day. Uh, I believe one of them, I, there's loads of cool YouTube videos on it, um, said that yesterday's coffee is tomorrow coffee, tomorrow's coffee, which is a great attitude to have, I believe. And for the storage containers, obviously recycling poop is kind of not something that most people would be into. Urine's just basically water anyway, but poop's harder to handle. So some of the storage containers get kept so they can see how the astronauts were faring um, during a particular mission. So they keep some for science and the rest basically get loaded onto a cargo shuttle and burned in the atmosphere because it weighs so much and it's so much effort to deal with it. They just kind of yeet it out the window, which is kind of cool. So it's a super neat um, situation. They basically use a fan to have a really small amount of suction, just enough to kind of act as though gravity were there, but not enough to injure anyone. And the toilets are really important. I don't know if you've ever gone somewhere or had an experience where there were not suitable toilets, but it makes a huge difference to quality of life having a proper toilet there. So the astronauts, I believe, are fairly happy with the current toilets they've got. They've recently redesigned them, NASA have, um, for future ISS missions, but also the Artemis missions to the moon. So that's super exciting. And these toilets are kind of key. The astronauts struggle <laughs> as a human would struggle if they don't have them. So if they ever break, um, all of them at once obviously would be very terrible but essentially it becomes like high priority. Okay, we need to find out what parts they need, what parts are broken and how we can basically fix this on super short notice. Because what happens if the astronauts don't have a toilet to go to, they end up having to use something called Apollo bags. So in the Apollo missions in Apollo 11 in 1969, basically previous missions, Astronauts didn't have a way to go to the toilet because no one was anywhere long enough that you would hopefully have to do anything. But I believe that just resulted in everyone peeing themselves in their spacesuits on the launch pad, um, which is a wild ride. Probably should have thought that through. Uh, so for the Apollo missions, obviously they're going to be there longer. When they went to the moon, they were there a while. <laughs> I should have probably looked that number up. Uh, so what they had were essentially I believe they're called like stadium pals, but like essentially a condom basically attached to a pipe, attached to a bag on your leg um, so that you could pee if you want to, but obviously you're then kind of stuck with the pee. Um, it's kind of a faff if the pee escapes that bag, but that's essentially what they used instead. They just filled up a bag. Um, obviously astronauts don't just pee. So there's something called Apollo bags, which are essentially bags that astronauts taped to their butt and that was how they went to the toilet. There wasn't an alternative option. It's how the um, Apollo astronauts went to the loo. Um, and these bags were notoriously difficult to use because I don't know if you've ever taped something to your own butt, but it's not the easiest place to reach. <laughs> so there were several incidents where um, astronauts did not take the bag to the correct place. Uh, which resulting in some hilarious calls to NASA um, about rogue items in in um, in space, which is kind of exciting. But these Apollo bags are still around because if all the toilets on the International Space Station were to break at once, the Apollo bags are basically the only option in that scenario. So um, yeah. The International Space Station does in fact have proper toilets with a very small amount of suction to replace gravity. And if all else fails, they have Apollo bags. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, please click like below and subscribe to the channel via the org. If you have questions about science or engineering, head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages, Leah Loves Science, 
and leave questions there or you can leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out this playlist right here. Bye.